Hi everyone! Today I'm going to share 6 amazing tofu recipes with you. They are all super simple and require very few ingredients, so I hope you'll give them a try. First up, we are making chili tofu and shrimp. It's inspired by the super popular Japanese dish, ebichiri, but trust me, it's just as delicious with tofu. My husband absolutely loved it, so I know you will too. So let's start by prepping the tofu. I like to cut it into small cubes like this, then place them between paper towels. No need for a heavy weight, just remove water lightly like this. Next, let's finely chop an onion. This is super important for the sauce. And don't skimp on the garlic. I used about 2 cloves for this amount of tofu and shrimp. Mix it up nice and fine. Now pour plenty of oil into a fry pan and fry the garlic over low heat. I prefer using clear sesame oil because it has a milder flavor. Since the raw material is not roasted sesame seeds, there is very little smell. Any oil will do, but choose one that has as little smell as possible. Be careful not to burn the garlic. By the way, did you know that ebichiri is actually a Japanese adaptation of a Chinese dish? In China, it's usually a spicier dish with shrimp cooked in a hot sauce. A Chinese chef opened a restaurant in Japan and adjusted the flavor to cater to the Japanese palate, which is how we know and love it today. Once the garlic is fragrant, remove it from the pan. Then add the onion and cook it until it becomes translucent. Slow frying the onion makes the sauce sweet and delicious. Traditionally, this dish is made with just shrimp, but adding tofu gives it a great variety of textures and makes it healthier. Vegans, for example, are recommended to make it only with tofu. Stir fry for 3 more minutes after the onion have turned translucent. After about 3 minutes of cooking the onion, turn off the heat and add the seasonings. Start with the doubanjun for a little kick. If you like it spicy, add more. I tasted it later and found it was hardly spicy, so I added just a little more doubanjun. Then add some grated ginger. Ketchup, sugar, adjust the sugar to your taste, and soy sauce. Now return the fried garlic to the pan. Turn the heat back on and cook for a short time. Turn off the heat again, as we'll toss in the tofu and shrimp in this sauce later. Next, let's prep the shrimp. The shrimp I bought already had the vein removed, but I like to take out the dark loin on the inside as well. It's apparently the nerve. I heard it doesn't affect the taste, but it just bothers me a bit. You can skip this step if you want. To reduce any fishy smell, I like to marinate the shrimp in a little sake for a few minutes. White wine works too. After that, cut them dry with paper towels and coat them in potato starch. To prevent the potato starch from sticking to the plate, 
I place a piece of plastic wrap on the plate before adding the curry shrimp. Do the same with the tofu. Some people may be afraid to fry tofu because of its high water content, but if it's left on a paper towel slightly like this, and covered with potato starch family, it will hardly splatter with oil. Tofu is especially prone to losing the potato starch coating, so try to minimize the surface area that touches the plate. I also used plastic wrap for this. Now let's fry the shrimp. They cook really quickly, so about a minute per side should be enough. The trick is to transfer the fried shrimp directly into the sauce while it's still hot. It's a good idea to warm up the sauce over low heat before adding the shrimp. Fry the tough next. If you use a lot of shrimp and tofu, you should turn off the heat once the pan with the sauce in it, otherwise the sauce will boil over. Again, it cooks very quickly. Once the potato starch is crispy, it's ready. Be careful not to let the tofu stick together. The crispy exterior and soft Fluffy interior is the best. Add the tough to the sauce. Once everything is curry in the sauce, it's ready to serve. This sauce is absolutely amazing and it's easily my favorite chili sauce recipe. My husband said it tasted like something you'd get at a restaurant. I cooked some udon noodles in the leftover sauce. It turned out to be the best pan fried udon I have ever had. Next up, let's make an egg and tofu bowl. It might sound simple. But it's packed with flavor and it's just as satisfying as a katsudon or oyakodon. It's also super healthy, so let's give it a try. First, let's chop up some onion and tofu. You don't need to press the tofu to remove excess water, just cut it up, that's it. Add some water to a small fry pan and mix in your seasonings. Soy sauce. Mirin, sake, and stock powder. I use a stock powder called shantan, but you can also use dash powder. Let's stir that all together. By the way, this shantan powder is a versatile powder that contains meat and vegetable extract, as well as onion, garlic, and some spices. It's also ideal for making ramen soup and can be used for all kinds of dishes. Please check out the my tools and seasonings link in the description section for more information, including the other seasonings I use. Cook the onion in the sauce until it's tender. While the onion is cooking, the sauce will reduce and thicken. Once the onion is almost soft, add the tofu. Cook it for about 1-2 to two minutes, turning it occasionally to coat it in the sauce. Let's reduce the sauce a bit more. If you have some crab sticks on hand, this is a great time to add them. They go really well with the eggs. 
once the test has reduced quite a bit or in the beta X. Cover the pan and cook for about a minute. You can adjust the cooking time to your preferred egg doneness. If you want to try a variation, you can replace the tofu with fried tofu, a brage. It gives it the juicier, meaty texture. But even with tofu, it's incredibly satisfying. My husband actually said he prefers this tough version over the meaty ones. Next up, we are making an addictive lotus root and tough stuff fry. Let's prepare the tough just like we did in the first recipe. Cut into cubes and remove water lightly. By the way, all the tough I used in my video is firm tofu, momen tofu in Japanese. There are two main types of tofu in Japan, momen tofu, that's firm tofu, and kinu tofu, that's silicon tofu. Momen tofu is made by coagulating soy milk with nigari, breaking it up and then pressing it between layers of clothes to give it a firm texture. Kinu tofu, on the other hand, is made by coagulating soy milk and leaving it as is, resulting in a softer, silkier texture. Momen tofu is great for absorbing flavors and holds its shape well, making it perfect for stir fries and stews. Kinu tofu has a smooth, silky texture and is often used in cold dishes like chilled tofu, hiyayako, and salad. How many different types of tofu do you have in your country? When making my recipes, I recommend using a firmer tofu that won't easily break apart when stir fried. For this recipe, we are going to use lotus root. It's autumn and lotus root is in season. I tried lotus root for the first time in the summer this year, but it wasn't very tasty. Vegetables really do taste best when they are in season. After peeling the lotus root, cut it into slices and pat it dry. Then cut it in potato starch. A little trick, put the lotus root and potato starch in the back and shake it to cut it evenly. Now let's fry it. If you don't have potato starch, you can fry it without it. Since wood vegetables like lotus wood and carrots take a long time to cook, frying them at high heat is a great time saver. Fry each side for about 2 minutes. If you don't have a lot of wood, you can substitute it with potatoes, carrots, or other vegetables. The sauce for this stuff fry is so delicious and versatile, so you can create many variations using tofu and your favorite vegetables. Once the lotus wood is fried, let's make the sauce. Combine mirin. Soy sauce, rice vinegar, sugar, grated ginger, grated garlic, and stock powder. Stir well. Turn on the heat and add the fried lotus root to the sauce. Then add the tofu. I lightly drain the water from the tofu first, so the sauce would not be diluted. Gently toss everything together to cut the ingredients in the sauce. 
Ideally, I'd cut the tuff in potato stitch and fry it like I did in the chili tuff and shrimp recipe. But to make it a bit healthier, I skipped the step this time. Even without frying the tuff, it's still incredibly delicious. My husband really loves this dish too. You could serve this over rice for a satisfying bowl. Next up, let's make an easy tough curry. For this recipe, we are going to squeeze out as much water from the tough as possible. Imagine the texture of cottage cheese, that's how dry we want it. Wrap the tough in paper towels and place a heavy plate on top. Let it sit while you prepare the other ingredients. Onions are must for curry. Let's chop them finely. This curry is called dry curry in Japan, which means it has very really little liquid. Traditionally, it's made with ground meat, but today we are using tough instead. Let's also chop the carrots finely. This is a great dish for sneaking veggies into kids, as many Japanese moms do. Finally, chop the bell pepper too, but it's optional. For the tomatoes, you may use canned tomatoes. Set aside a few pieces for garnish. And peel the rest and chop them up to blend into the curry. I said I would use tofu instead of meat, but if there is no meat at all, the flavor would be a little blunt and I would like to add some meat balls so I added a little pork belly. The color of the meat is a little strange because it was frozen and heated in the microwave, but don't worry about it. Cut into small pieces. Feel free to use any meat you like or omit it entirely for a vegan version. Mix the garlic. Heat some olive oil in the pan and fry the garlic until the fragrant. Add some grated ginger. Add the meat and cook until it changed color. Then add onion and carrot. Cook until the vegetables are softened. Add the tomatoes and curry powder. I've originally put in a tablespoon. It was a little short on curry powder, so I added extra garam masala. It's an Indian spice blend that typically contains black pepper, coriander, red chili pepper, cardamom, white pepper, cumin, cloves, and cinnamon. The extra spice actually added a nice depth of flavor. Add the ketchup, sake, soy sauce, oyster sauce, and sugar. Stir well. As the tomatoes cook, they'll release their juices. Keep stirring and simmer until the liquid has evaporated. Add the pressed tofu. Remember to squeeze out as much water as possible. Crumble the tuff with a spatula. Traditionally, this dish is made with a lot of ground meat, but using tuff makes it a healthier and lighter option. I forgot to add consomme. 
Use your favorite stock powder or bouillon. Add the bell pepper just before serving. Cook for about 1 to 2 minutes. Taste and adjust the seasoning with salt if needed. The flavor will vary depending on the type of tofu you use, so taste as you go. When the water has evaporated sufficiently, it's ready. Serve over rice and garnish with a boiled egg and diced tomatoes. The tofu gives this dry curry a wonderfully smooth and creamy texture. It's absolutely delicious. Next up, let's make a stir fry of tofu and Chinese chives with a miso sauce. Tofu is so versatile because it doesn't have a strong flavor on its own. So it can absorb any flavor you add to it. Usually, I just eat it cold with soy sauce, but today I've created a super addictive miso sauce that I want to try with it. Just like in the previous recipes, let's wrap the cut tofu in paper towels to remove excess moisture. We'll be using Chinese chives today, but you can use spinach, cabbage, or any other leafy greens you like. Let's also add some onion. It seems like onions are a staple in almost all of these six recipes in this video. Since miso can be a little tricky to dissolve, let's make the sauce first. In the bowl, combine miso paste, mirin, soy sauce, oyster sauce, and sugar. Mix well until the miso is completely dissolved. This miso sauce is so versatile, you can use it for stir fry meat or even for making fried rice. Heat some oil in a fry pan and fried onion. Once it's almost softened, add the tofu. Cook until the tofu is slightly browned. Before I started cooking this dish, I thought that I would have to use a teflon curry fry pan, otherwise the tofu would stick to the pan and it would be a terrible mess. So I decided not to use the square iron fry pan that I always use. As expected, the tough slid around easily on this pan, even with minimal oil. If you're using an iron or stainless steel pan, make sure to heat it well and coat it with oil before adding the tofu. Once the tofu is cooked to your liking, add the Chinese chives. Then add the miso sauce. Toss everything together to cut the ingredients evenly. I think you can add a little powder starch dissolved in water to thicken it, but I skipped it this time. Fry the Chinese chives for 1-2 to two minutes and they are just right. This addictive miso sauce was the best. I think this could be made into a rice bowl too. 
Last but not least, let's make a nigga tofu, a traditional Japanese beef and tofu stew. When people think of popular tough dishes, many Japanese people would probably mention this one. It's similar to sukiyaki, but as the name suggests, the main ingredients are meat and tofu. To prevent the flavor of the broth from becoming diluted, wrap the tofu in paper towel and leave it for a while. I usually cut the tofu into smaller pieces, but for a more dramatic presentation, I'm going to leave it whole this time. Some people add green onion, but I prefer using onions. They add a lovely sweetness to the dish. And of course, we need beef. I don't buy beef very often, so my husband is always excited when I do. Let's cut the beef into bite-sized pieces. Shirataki noodles are optional. But they add a nice texture. Shirataki is made from konjac and is often used in sukiyaki and oden. Boil the shirataki for about 2 minutes to remove any unpleasant smell. Once the shirataki is ready, let's make the broth. Combine water, soy sauce, sake, mirin, and sugar in the pot, and stir well. Since the meat will release its own flavor, we don't need any additional dash powder. Add onion and bring to a boil. Then add the beef. Thinly sliced beef cooks very quickly. So remove it from the pot once it's cooked. If we leave it in too long, it will become tough. Add the tofu and shirataki to the pot. Shirataki takes longer to absorb flavors, and the tofu is large, so you want to suck it in the broth as long as possible. Cook the tofu for 2 minutes, turn over halfway through. After about 2 minutes of cooking, I turn off the heat already. Then let the flavor suck in and it's ready to eat. By the way, I was just curious and looked up the difference between sukiyaki and nik tofu. Then there are quite a lot of differences. They differ in terms of cooking method, ingredients, seasoning, and how they are served. First, cooking method. Nikku tofu is a simmer dish where the ingredients are cooked in a sauce. The method of cooking sukiyaki depends on the region, but in the Kansai region, the most common method is to grill the ingredients, add seasonings, and cook them with the water released from the vegetable. Sukiyaki is mostly classified as a nabe dish. Second, ingredients. The ingredients for nikku tofu are usually simpler, with tofu and meat being the main component. Sukiyaki has a wider variety of ingredients, including beef, green onions, shungeku, shirataki, and tofu. Third, seasoning. Nikku tofu has a milder flavor compared to sukiyaki. Since tofu is the main ingredient, the flavor is more subtle. Sukiyaki, on the other hand, is characterized by a stronger flavor than nikku tofu. Since meat is the main ingredient, you can enjoy a gusto of flavor. Fourth, how they are served. Sukiyaki is often eaten with raw egg, while nikku tofu is not. However, you can certainly enjoy nikku tofu with a soft boiled egg on the side. As a Japanese, I also learned clear differences this time. Now let's return to our nikku tofu. 
front of the heat and add the beef back in. Placing it on top of the tofu will prevent it from becoming tough. I let it sit for an hour while I went for a run to let the flavor suck in. When I reheated it, I noticed that the flavor was a bit blunt, so I added a little more of each seasoning. I also laid some of the blows over the tuff to make sure it was well seasoned. This dish is like a tough centric sukiyaki. If you are looking to experience a traditional Japanese dish, I highly recommend trying this. Which tough dish looks best? I hope everyone likes it. Thank you so much for watching our video. Please subscribe to our channel. If you are already a subscriber and would like to support our channel, please join our membership. Membership feedback will be reflected in content creation. See you in the next video!